Good morning, everyone. It's Pam from Wellness Untamed. Welcome back to the channel. I do not have to go to work this morning. It's my day off. It's Thursday, March 16th. And so today I'm gonna to take this time to get busy doing some seed planting for the garden. I have some things planted already, but um, about mid-March is when I really get serious about getting things going. So this morning I'm gonna finish my morning coffee and get showered and take you along with the process of getting seeds going. Okay, so I've been outside. I've gathered up all of my um, trays and things to get things going and my seed starting medium. So we are gonna get started on, on the seeds. Um, so what I wanna show you is I have, I have six of these little totes here that I hold keep my seeds in um, that's what I store them in for winter I have six of them so I have a lot of seeds um, today though I'm only gonna focus on a few of them um, while it's probably the biggest uh, number of seeds that I have started at one time this year so far um, I do have um, a whole lot more that I'm going to be doing later. I use Jiffy's organic, natural and organic seed starting mix. There are other kinds. Some people make their own. I do not. Even when I was um, doing my market garden business, I just bought this. Um, but, uh, you know, if you've got acres and acres that you're doing, uh, you, you probably either want to make it yourself or get something in bulk. But this works for me. It has worked for me. I get these 12 quart bags. It's probably more expensive than buying in bulk, but that was easy for me because I have another full-time job at the time. Um, and then these are my seed starting trays that I use. And because I had the market garden business, I have these big trays. And I've cut like this one. I've cut some of them down as I'm growing for myself. And you'll kind of see how that works out. But um, I usually don't water from the bottom right away. Um, I do, I get the soil moist and then, or the seed starting medium, it's not really soil, um, moist and I put plastic over top to make it like a mini greenhouse effect inside in my growing room. And um, that really keeps things pretty moist until I, till they, germinate and I need to start watering from below. So that's how I do it. I'm sure there are lots of ways other people do, but that's my deal. So I kind of got started on doing a few things ahead of time. I have some um, things that I planted off camera. These are just some small little containers. I've cut down my big ones since I'm not doing market garden right now. Um, it doesn't make sense for me to plant huge flats of things um, unless it's something like onions or things that I'm going to be overwintering. So I have grown stevia in the past. I am growing it again. Um, this is from Johnny's. Stevia is tiny, tiny seeds. So I just very lightly covered them with um, a very, very um, light scattering of growing medium once I planted them and you always make sure you label them. And the thing about my labels is I buy these, you can make labels from any, anything, any piece of wood, any, a plastic container of some kind that you cut up. But it's just for me, I don't buy a lot of plastic containers. Um, I, a few maybe, but not enough to worry about making markers out of. So I buy these markers um, and then I don't keep them big like this unless I'm using them um, in the past when I have sold plants. Um, I might use, keep, uh, use the whole marker to mark things with for sale purposes or I will put a label on them and not use a marker at all. But what I do with these I reuse them too. I don't just use them once and throw them away. Um, is I will cut them. And so I will cut them either in half or in thirds. So here's one I cut down. So I get like two or three out of one. Um, and the reason I do that is because you'll see here with my eggplant that I just planted, um, they you know, they stand up and I put plastic over these under my lights so that um, they helps them germinate faster. And um, 
the if they stand up too high when I pull the plastic off to water or whatever they um, that tends to pull these out and so it's just if they're smaller it's just easier to um, handle them in my ground that's just my thing I, if you've got a great big system and then you're in a heated greenhouse then maybe you don't even have to cover yours with plastic but I do I get my my the plastic that I use is um, something I reuse every year and it's something that's just going to be thrown away at the hospital um, there's a lot of waste and things like that at the hospital and I work in a procedural area where we have this plastic sheeting that we use it's sterile but we don't always need it depending on the procedure we're doing and so rather than throw them away I will bring some of them home and I have quite a few and I use them for purposes like this and I just reuse them every year you can and I use them for painting too if I've got something I'm painting and I'll use it for a drop cloth or something so um, things like that don't have to get thrown in the landfill for no reason so anyway I planted the stevia um, these are eggplant that I planted and I'm gonna go over what I've got and then I'm gonna show you kind of the process I do um, so I'll just show you what I've got. And this is kind of the process. I'm trying four different eggplant this year. I love eggplant. I did not always love eggplant my whole life. Um, my mom would make eggplant. She just typically did the, you know, you, the, the simple way that people do eggplant. You slice it, bread it, fry it. And while I like that, that's what I grew up with, um, it wasn't something I ever felt I needed to plant it for myself because I, I didn't eat enough of it to do that. But what I've learned about eggplant, and a lot of things that I plant for myself now, I learned to experiment with by having a market garden and being a vendor at the farmer's market. Um, people would ask for things, or um, I just would do research because a lot of times somebody wants to try something new, but they're not really sure. It looks beautiful there on the table, but they don't really know what to do with it. So um, I started experimenting with things myself so I could help teach my customers what to do. So this year I have four different varieties. I've tried many varieties of eggplant. Um, my, my favorite go-to is Anina. Um, it's from Johnny's and um, it's not, it, it's shaped like your typical eggplant, but they're typically a little bit smaller not a lot smaller, but a little bit smaller. And they are a really pretty shade of purple, lavender purple with white streaks through it. And so that's been the one I usually plant. I have also done some others, but I'm trying some new ones this year. And so High Mowing had a couple that I wanted to try. Um, one is called Little Finger Eggplant. And these are um, a dark, they're almost black when they are ripe, but they're very thin. And long so like six to eight inches long and and thin so that's why it's little finger so I'm gonna try those as something new this year I have grown um, long slender eggplants in the past not long slender eggplants in the past and they were called Hansel and Gretel and I don't know if you guys have ever seen those at the farmers market but they're really fun they're they're not they're probably no longer than this if they're even this as long as this one's going to be and they um they have hansel is the the purple version and gretel is the white one and so they grow the same they're about the same size and i would take them to the farmer's market and sell them you know in a little box together and people loved it they thought it was fun um, and they're delicious as well um ping tong that's a new one for me these are get i think pretty long um these get, it doesn't say, oh, here it is. Um, slender 12 to 18 inch long purple fruit. So these are gonna be really long. And so that's gonna be, it's just gonna be fun to try and see. I'm sure they'll all taste very similar, but um, it'll be fun to try and use those for sautés. Um, and then I have the Listada de Gandia. And it is, I think by the sounds of it, going to be a little bit similar to the Anina. And we'll find out, but that's kind of what I'm thinking. So um, these are organic. 
high mowing is organic and Johnny's were organic. Sometimes, you, like with Johnny's, um, you can get seeds that, it might be the same variety, but they have it in um, organic seeds and then they have seeds that are not organic. I buy both, if I can, if I have an organic option, I buy organic. If I don't, I will get the other seeds. I'm growing everything in an organic manner, so it, it doesn't, to me, I don't think the seed is gonna make that big of a difference. And eventually, if I save my own seeds, some of these are open pollinated, so I can save them. And I don't, I'm gonna have to look and see. I might have some eggplant seeds that I'm, because my goal was this year of the ones I saved, um, if I've never saved them before, I wanted to experiment and see if I could grow. So I'm gonna have to check. I might have some um, Anina seeds in the basement in my in a jar put away so that I could try them this year. I'll have to check. So these are my four that I'm gonna try. The An Aninas, I bought, I'm growing a few plants of six plants because I know that's a tried and true. The others are experiments. So only three plants of each. And because I am an empty nester, that will be way more than what I need as far as um, eggplant goes. So I'm probably going to be either giving some plants away or giving eggplant away. I don't really wanna take up too much space in my um, garden area for things I don't need. But um, if I have, if all these plants do well, I may be, you know, giving some away. I used to sell my extras at the farmer's market, but since I'm not at the farmer's market anymore, I won't be selling. So I'm gonna set these aside. And what I have done is I, I, I guess I should explain, I have my bucket here and I put some of my seed starting mix in there and I put warm water. Because I do warm water because this has been in my garage where it's cold. And so um, that just helps warm it up a little bit so it's not so cold and it's not so shocking to the seeds. So, Anyway, I'm gonna get started on the next thing is going to be peppers. Here are all the bazillions of pepper seeds I have. Oh my goodness, I have too many. And I'm probably not going to start everything. There are one, two, three, four, probably about at least 20 or 25 different packets of seeds here. I'm not gonna grow that many varieties. However, some there's like a, maybe three or four of these that are duplicates, um, so there's probably not that quite that many, but there are some that I really am excited about. Um, habaneros, I have grown habaneros in the past, not from this company, but this is called Peppers of the World. I've never gotten any of their seeds before, so we're gonna find out how well they do. Um, but I have grown habaneros, and um, I used to grow them for the farmer's market. I've got grown them for myself. In fact, I have habanero jelly in the basement that I've still got to use the rest of it. I've used some of it, but I haven't gotten to all of it yet. And um, they were a big hit at the farmer's market. I also used to go grow ghost peppers, which I had one person that was reliably there first thing in the morning to buy up all of my, usually all of my ghost peppers, um, unless I had an overabundance that was more than what he could handle. But I asked him one day what he did with all these hot peppers, because he would, I mean, that's all he would buy from me is all the hot peppers. And he just said he dried them and made seasonings out of them. So, which I do too. Um, I have yet to do a mixture of seasoning, which is my goal this year is to do a mixture. So habaneros is on the list. Um, and then I have pepperoncinis. I don't know if you've ever had a pepperoncini. Uh, you probably have, whether you knew it or not. Um, I like to put these in things like, um, like if I make a roast in the crock pot and then shred it up, I can throw these in with the roast when I'm cooking and make sandwiches. Um, these are good on um, pickled and to put them on like, um, if you grill hot dogs or brats or something, these are good. Um, hot Thai peppers, I've grown these before. I actually have not made use of them myself um, that I remember. It's possible I maybe have put them in fresh, but I know I've never canned or pickled them or frozen them, but I may have used them fresh in recipes when I was growing them for the farmer's market, but people seem to love these. Um, Guajillo, Guajillo, 
um, peppers. I have never grown these, um, but I have a lot of recipes. I have um, Patty's Mexican Table Cookbook, which I've had for years, and um, there are things that she makes it call for this and I've never, I've always just used um, a jalapeno because that's what I usually have a lot of. And anyway, I'm, ex I'm excited to try these. Red Flames I've tried before, they are very good. Um, seems to me these are very similar to like a, a cayenne pepper. El Eden, I cannot remember why I bought these. What was, what was um, pleasing to me about these, but I'm not ever, grown El Eden before and I, since they don't have a picture on the package I can't remember why I was drawn to these but we're gonna find out. Red Rockets I have grown for many years they're kind of like a cayenne. Escamillo um, is a new one for me I believe this is a sweet pepper yeah so we're gonna find I'm not I, with the, again without the picture I can't tell you why I was drawn to this but it is a sweet pepper. Um, paprikas, I have a couple different paprikas in here and um, I'm excited to try them. I have <clears throat> never grown them from Baker's Creek and I've had Baker's Creek things that turn out great. I have Baker's Creek things that are not. So they're kind of a crapshoot, I feel like, with them. But they have interesting things. All of their things are um, supposed to be heirloom. So that was what drawn, drew me to these because I want to be able to save seeds. And um, I have grown paprikas before, but like I said, just not this brand. Um, and I haven't grown them for a while. So, And then we've got the New Mexico Joe E. Parker. Again, I cannot remember why I did these, but these are kind of like an Anaheim. And I love Anaheims. And I grew Anaheims last year. And I did okay with them, but I would like to have had more. Um, Avenada, these are um, an habanero without the heat. So um, if you can't stand the heat, you don't have to stay out of the kitchen. We got, we have heatless habaneros. I've never grown those before. So this is gonna be an experiment. I have Jedi's, which I absolutely love these. These are my favorite um, jalapenos. To grow last year I did not have a lot of luck with my jalapenos and um, I had I mean I had jalapenos but they came so late in the season that it got to be frost time and I got a few that I was able to um, pickle and a few that I was able to stuff and make jalapeno poppers and put in the freezer which I still have some in the freezer but um, very few I like to chop them up and just have them available in the freezer throughout the winter and I got high very few for that so um, I'm looking forward to getting some more of these and I also like to do the the chilies that when once they turn red um, I can kind of I don't want to say smoke because I, I cook them on the grill and um, but I do use a little bit of water and smoky stuff underneath just to kind of help give them a little bit of a smoky flavor and then I'll make adobo sauce and then I freeze those um, individual peppers with some adobo sauce, adobo sauce and I put them in the freezer. I still have some but I'm getting low so I'm hoping to get a good um, crop of jalapenos this year so I can do that again because I wasn't able to do that last year. And then I have actual Anaheim peppers, um, which I like, love them. And I have the Barons, which are, um, I love these. These are my favorite for, um, oh, what are they called? I stuff these, they, poblano peppers. Poblano, and then once they turn red, they are considered an ancho chili. And last year, um, I got a lot of poblanos, not so many anchos, because again, for some reason, I don't know if I was just late in getting the peppers out or if the weather just didn't cooperate, but I did not get, um, I think maybe one red, <laughs> one ancho. So I'm, I'm going for that, because I don't really need any poblanos. I have already, what I do with poblanos is, um, I dried some. I have like a half gallon of dried poblanos downstairs and um, I do want to mix them in it with a pepper blend uh, at some point when I run out of what I've got in the pantry. But um, I also, what I really like to do with them is I will um, roast them, either roast them on the oven or I'll put them right on the flame of my gas 
stove and char the outside, peel them, seed them, and then I will just make a, you know, just make one slice across and down, put that all nice and neat back together and freeze them. And then I can stuff those with many things. And then I love doing that. I also use slices of these to, um, actually make macaroni and cheese. Um, I mix it with the milk um, and in a blender and I blend them up together with the milk and then I strain it and the peppers come out but the milk then has that little heat flavor. It just adds a little something to macaroni and cheese. So um, something I learned from Patty's Mexican Table. It's not in her cookbook but um, she has that recipe online. So those are my, I love those. Escamillo, um, they're sweet peppers and I don't remember what kind of sweet peppers, more of the poblanos. And then these are, I don't, again, I don't remember um, Highlanders. These are a hybrid, so it's not something I would save a seed from, but I don't remember why I bought these because again, no picture, but um, I'll find out and I probably will give those a try. More paprika is a different variety, but, um, or different company, Seed Savers. And then we've got the lunchbox. They're so cute and I've grown these before and they are so good. And you can get, you know, the plant has those little mini peppers on that you can just pull off and eat with a dip. You can put them in salads they are, eat, or eat them. I was notorious for going out and that would be a snack while I was out gardening, just pull them off and just eat them right off the vine. And no, I don't wash things. I just kind of blow off any dirt that there could be if there is any and I eat it. Um, more of the poblanos, more of the jalapenos, antiplano. These are hot peppers, but I don't, again, remember why they're a new one for me. Or barons and then more pepperoncino or pepperoncini. So um, that's what I'm gonna go with, with um, planting peppers. I'm probably not gonna do a whole ton of bell peppers this year. I'm sure some of these sweet peppers that I have are bell peppers. I usually get, um, oh, you know what? I think I have some pepper seeds in the basement for my, um, for what I usually grow. And right now it's escaping me. Red night, I think is what they are. Um, and they get pretty good size. And I, I have grown purple peppers. I'm gonna have to see if I have seeds for those downstairs. Um, and I'll check before I start planting here. It just makes a really beautiful variety. Now the purple ones will not stay purple when you cook them. They kind of turn a blah color or green, but um, because they're only purple on the outside. They are actually green on the inside, but I use them for stuffing. I use, they're really pretty if you're gonna do some different colors of peppers in a um, salad, because the purple will keep its color for that. Um, but once you cook them, they don't stay purple. That's the sad part, I wish they did. So I'm gonna check out and see what I've got for peppers in the basement, because I have a feeling I've got some down there that I might want to try just to make sure that they are um, that they are going to germinate and that they're good ones. So I did go downstairs and check and I do have some of the red night bell peppers that I um, harvested, um, seeds that I harvested last year. The thing about it, I don't have any of the purple ones sadly, the, the thing about um, harvesting seeds from plants is you can't just take from a young plant and keep the seeds. You really need to let that pepper or tomato or whatever go beyond its prime. Um, definitely has to at least be ripe so that the seeds are viable. Um, so I'm sure this was a pepper that was I allowed to get all red and wrinkly and everything on the vine before I brought it in and took them. So. Fingers crossed, I'm gonna mark these and and so I know which ones were the ones that I harvested and that way I can know if they're viable for future purposes um, for next year and then I won't have to worry about buying bell pepper plants next, or bell pepper seeds next year. The thing about, um, the thing about bell peppers this year is I don't need a whole lot. I just need a few because I have a, a ton of them in my freezer uh, from last year 
and I think I was still using up from the previous year. So I've still got more to, I can, I can pull from. So I don't want a lot of plants when it comes to bell peppers. I just want, I would be happy with two, two. Um, you can harvest them when they're green, but if you leave them on the vine, they will turn that bright, beautiful red. And I've had peppers of all colors, orange, red, purple, um, blancas, which are kind of a whitish. Um, they, they just, um, the longer you leave them on, they change to what they're supposed to be, but they all start out green. And those are immature, so you can't really save seeds that, I mean, I don't wanna say you can't, I guess you could try it, but the green pepper, bell pepper, is an immature pepper. And in order to get um, more viable seeds, you just kinda of have to wait till they are really past their prime for eating, kind of all wrinkly and um, so that's probably why I only ended up with the Red Knight <laughs> this year. I probably didn't allow that to happen. So, but I've got all these other seeds. I'm sure I have plenty to choose from. So I am probably not going to plant all of these. I will kind of go through as I'm planting here and make some choices on what I'm going to do. But as long as I keep the seeds in a nice, cool, dry area and the totes that I keep them in, totes, um, I have six of these toads full of seeds and they are, you know, pretty dry in here. Um, I don't know if I showed you already how I keep my seeds, but when I uh, kind of get the, get a plan for what I'm going to plant, I will bundle together all the seeds that I'm going to start on one given day. So like today I'm starting, you know, some certain seeds. And so I have them bundled with a rubber band and a note and they're on my planner, which seeds are getting started today. That's gonna to be best to start them. Some you have to start super early. Like I have onions already planted, onions and leeks. And I have some herbs that take a long time. Celery takes forever. So I have that going already down and I've had some of this stuff going since February. But these plants in particular, now is a good time for my growing zone to start them. So. I'm gonna get started on the pepper plants. So I checked it out, the Escamillo peppers are um, kind of like an Italian roasting pepper. They look very similar to paprikas. They are a sweet pepper. Um, they're not a bell pepper. They are, um, but they're gonna be sweet and a bell pepper sweet. So we'll find out, we'll kind of find out, I guess. I'm gonna grow them and see what comes of it. And the Altiplano peppers, um, I looked up, they are um, a serrano pepper. So they'll be nice and spicy. Uh, they are more spicy, I believe, than a jalapeno. Anyway, I'd been wanting to try those to, to check the difference, so that's what that is. And I ended up with a whole bunch of the barons. Let's see. And the Highlanders, I um, discovered if I didn't already, um, if I didn't already know that, they were just like an Anaheim pepper. Where did they go? Okay, they are like an Anaheim. And the New Mexico Joe E. Parkers are also at Anaheim. Um, so those were the ones I couldn't really remember, so I looked them up real quick and that's what I discovered. So I'm just getting the um, container ready here for me to get the peppers planted. I did discover that on the paprikas, um, I'm sure I did this with an intention because now that I've discovered I did it, I'm excited. Um, one of the paprika varieties I have is more of a sweet paprika. The one I got from Seed Savers, the Fair Orzon paprika is a sweet pepper, paprika pepper. And the other one that I got from, from Baker's Creek is um, a mildly spicy, it's a medium hot, I guess medium hot. So I'm excited to try, so I will definitely be growing both of these so that I can try um, them each and see the difference in the flavor and maybe they'll even be good um, combined together to make my own paprika seasoning. Okay, so I got all the peppers done and I am gonna tell you I'm really pushing the envelope on this one. I didn't wanna overdo the peppers However, peppers can be a little bit trickier to start than some other things. So, um, you know, it's possible that I am really pushing it too far. 
because they like a lot of warmth to get going and I'm gonna have them downstairs in my growing room and yes they will have lights on them but a lot of times they really prefer to have a heating mat I have never used a heating mat to start any of my seed starts and I've always been able to get some going but I am gonna say if I'm gonna have trouble with something I can plan on it being peppers. So I am pushing it a little bit. I still have time if I really want to, to get more going, um, but I just don't want to waste the space. And on the on the odd chance that they should all, all start and germinate just fine, um, I don't want to, you know, use up that space and use the seeds. And I don't, if they should all germinate, then, um, I'm gonna have an overabundance if I overdo it and I either will have to give them away or something And it's not that I don't want to give away plants. Of course I do but I also don't know a lot of people That garden that don't start their own from seed. There are some I do have people that I know that don't start their own from seed and I have started some for them in the past when I have a market garden going but I just don't want to rely on that if I have extra I'm happy to, to give them away, but I just want to make sure that I'm not overdoing it and wasting things too, wasting resources. So I'm going to cover these up with a little bit of dry medium and then they'll be ready to get downstairs. So now I'm going to get started on a few of my um, herbal things. Uh, I've got a few downstairs already started and there's more to come on the herbs, but um, I have lemon balm that I'm going to get started. Um, I have a couple different places that I've gotten this from and <clears throat> that is also known as Melissa, which has huge healing and medicinal compounds. Um, I do have Melissa, um, I believe I have some Melissa oil. Um, I rarely use it because it's such a precious oil. So I thought if I could grow um, the actual lemon balm, it it would serve a, a similar purpose in a different way. Um, I can make teas out of this. I can make I can make a lot of I can make extracts um, and tinctures from this as well. Um, but it's super expensive if you buy it in the oil form, super, super expensive. So I don't wanna waste the oil on something that I could maybe do from home. Um, the thing about lemon balm, it is in the mint family. Actually, I have three sources, I guess, of my lemon balm. Um, it's from the mint family, and if you've ever grown anything um, mint-wise, uh, you, you have learned not to plant it anywhere that you don't want it to grow profusely because it is very invasive. Um, I have um, peppermint that I planted in a garden, one of my gardens many years ago. I have tried <laughs> fervently to get rid of it and it just keeps coming back. It's not that I don't want the peppermint, it's just that it takes over. And it was getting mixed in with my um, oregano and all of, some of my other things that I just, I just didn't want that to happen. So I have found I don't have to plant peppermint. I, as much as I, as many years, it's been several years, I've been yanking that out of the ground, it still comes back. If it has the littlest, tiniest little runner on there, it will continue to grow. And I have plenty of peppermint from that garden that even though I keep trying to get it out, it still keeps coming back. So I have enough um, for my purposes. So I am gonna grow the lemon balm, but what I do with the lemon balm is while it probably would work as a perennial like the peppermint, I grow it in pots so it doesn't get crazy out of control and um, sometimes it'll overwinter, sometimes it won't in those situations. So I have that, I have hyssop, which um, is a new one for me and I'm gonna be using this. This is a perennial, so I'm hoping it will be a perennial in my growing zone, we'll find out. Um, and it's got like an anise flavor and it's good in teas and things. So I'm gonna just give this a try. As I get it um, going, you know, we can talk more about more of the medicinal things if it all works out. I also have something, I don't see it here right now, but it's called pumpkin on a stick. And I don't know what I did with it. Oh, here it is. Um, but it's actually a really cool looking plant. And I have seen people use it um, in flower arrangements. 
and it's really it's really a fun looking plant but it also has medicinal properties that if I can get it going this will be the first time I'm trying it and from a company um, I guess I have ordered things from Park Seed before but I don't know I don't remember how well I like that company so we'll find out if these germinate really well I've got some other things from Park Seed that I have um, for herbs as well so we're gonna find out if I end up liking them or not um, so Anyway, it's a fun plant. I've seen other people with it at the farmer's market, people who grow um, mainly for flower arrangements. And um, it's really kind of cool looking, but I know it has medicinal properties as well. So I'm gonna do that. I am gonna grow some ground cherries, um, Aunt Molly's. I have grown these before. They are not technically a perennial here where I live, but as they fall off the plant, as the ground cherries fall off the plant, they will seed themselves. And they're, they're in the nightshade family and the tomato family. So um, they reseed themselves pretty readily. Um, so I had, I planted them once, I had them for many years. And I finally, it's like I didn't want to keep them in the same place all the time because I like to rotate my things. So eventually I did get rid of them. <laughs> so. I did get rid of them um, but they're actually really fun they are um, good to eat fresh and I made a lot of jam with them when I had them before um, I made a ton of jam and I even gave the jam away I had so many um, to people who are familiar with with ground cherries so they're really good and um, I'm anyway going to I'm in a position now where I haven't had any for a couple of years that have reseeded themselves. So I'm gonna go ahead and plant some more of those. And then I have my cauliflower that I'm starting. Um, I'm trying to get that in early. You either get it in early and you get an early crop or it'll sit there all summer and do nothing until fall. And then um, and then you might as well just wait it and planted it in the for fall crops. So um, I am gonna plant, I have some fun ones. I have just the typical white and it's a, a, I usually get snow, but it, I don't, I think I didn't, I think I couldn't get that one this year. Yeah. So I ended up with this one. We'll find out if I like this. It's called Fioretto. It's a white cauliflower. And then I got, I've gotten, got some purples. Um, one is a, from Seed Savers, it is a De Cecilia Violetto. And um, so it's purple. This one from Baker's Creek, it looks like it's gonna have some, you know, blending of colors in it. We'll find out. Um, sometimes Baker's Creek is uh, kind of like Seed Savers. It's a, it's a hit and miss. Sometimes you get great results, other times not so much. But I also did get a Romanesco. I've never successfully grown a Romanesco, so I'm gonna give it a try again. Um, and see if I have better luck with it this year. I have in the past grown some yellow cauliflowers that they're really kind of cool too. Um, I will say I don't think the color always sticks when you are when you cook them. I think the color kind of cooks out of them, but it's fun if you're eating them fresh. So I have those and I've got Brussels sprouts I'm gonna get going. Those take a long time. I'll start them in the spring. They won't be ready until well into the fall. And so, um, I like to to grow those I and I will tell you um, I don't get mine don't get as large as what you get at the grocery store but they're big enough they're big enough and then I've got a few varieties of kale that I'm gonna get started so kale can withstand um, a lot of the brassicas can withstand they like cold weather so um, that's why if you don't get the cauliflower started early enough, it gets too hot. And the plant will sit there all summer, but it's wasted space and it won't do anything till the fall. So um, kale, though, I wanna get that going. I've got several varieties. I My favorite is um, probably the scarlet kale. I have a couple different companies for that. Um, it's just, it seems to be that it's a little, the pests tend to not bother it as much. At least that's been my experience every year that I've grown it. And then this Rugged Jack, I got, it's, it's a Russian red. Um, I got it for free. I have grown Russian red from Johnny's Selected Seeds and it is a great kale. It's more of a flat leafed kale, but it's, it's very delicious. And so this was free, so I'm gonna go ahead and plant it. And then I have some 
um, black magic and that's more like a dinosaur kale it's more for I wouldn't use it so much in salads but I but for cooking um, it's a great you can freeze it and preserve it that way and use it in um, soup and things like that in the future so I am gonna get those started also and I think that pretty much ends what I wanted to get started today um, other than I wanted to plant some things outside, which I don't know that I'm going to get to, um, just because the, it, the weather is a little bit um, cold this week. I might wait another week to get that stuff going out in the greenhouse. Um, it, it's kind of like, you know, any. I think weather everywhere anymore is unpredictable. They used to say here in the Midwest, if you don't like the weather, just wait a few hours, it'll be different. <laughs> And, but I think they're saying that everywhere now because the weather is just totally unpredictable no matter where you live these days. So, but anyway, I'm going to get these going and then I kind of will show you where I will end up putting them to get them germinated. So as far as the pumpkin on a stick, as I was looking at the instructions, since I've never planted this before, um, it requires light. It was one of those that I, I don't know if I mentioned it before, um, but there are some of them that require, some seeds require light to germinate. And um, so you don't cover them with the soil medium. So I just put them in a separate container. This is just, an, somebody gave this to me. Um, I think my Tom brought it over. It's some takeout container that he had, or maybe it was my dad's. And I can start plants in those. And so I just put the medium on top. I put the seeds on, kind of press them down. It is moist medium. I put some wrapper over it, um, plastic wrap, and I'm gonna take them into, I'm not gonna put them downstairs in my grow room I'm, and waste light. With these, I'm just gonna take them into, um, actually it's my guest room. During the winter, I bring plants in from the outside. I have a lemon, tr a small lemon tree and lime tree. I actually have two lemons on the lemon tree right now that are probably ready to use anytime. And I have some other plants that I brought in from the outdoors, but, um, and some wheat grass that I started um, in there too for the same reason. You just, it needs to have light. To, and so rather than to waste artificial light, um, because I don't really think it needs the warmth so much. I think it just needs light and I'm not covering it. I'm just going to put this in the guest room by a window and hopefully they'll germinate. The wheatgrass did. It's not done yet. It's I've just got a few that have germinated and I really don't know if I planted the wheatgrass thick enough. This is a new one for me too. Um, but anyway, I'm giving it a shot. So the wheatgrass is has done um, germinated well hopefully more of it will germinate so I'm going to do the same with this it's not going to go downstairs so I have you down in my where I start my seeds and um, some of them I've actually taken upstairs because they are beyond needing to be down here but this is just kind of an example um, this is all celery and you can see they're getting kind of their true leaves here. So pretty soon I'll be taking those upstairs too. I have lemongrass and this, these poor sickly looking little things are something I, bells of Ireland. So even if I only get a couple of those, I'm okay with that because it was just an experiment. But I have some passion flower and this is um, rosemary. Um, I have two different kinds of spinach, or excuse me. I have two different kinds of celery that I'm working on. These two rows are one kind. Those are tango, which is something I've grown before. And the other one, can't remember, conquista. I think I've tried both of those before. So they're coming along nicely. And this lemongrass is gonna be nice. Um, you can make tea, you can do Asian meals with it. Um, I just planted in pots near my back patio and it um, supposedly keeps uh, mosquitoes away. I don't know that it truly does that, but I love, love, love rosemary. So I like starting that every year and I have a pot that I bring in. And then after a couple of years, I kind of re redo that, but excited about starting, um, coneflower echinacea from, um, seed this year. I have some in my yard that I do harvest for medicinal purposes, but this will be kind of fun. I've never started that by seed. So pretty soon I'll be taking these out of here. 
since they're kind of getting true leaves on them. These are some examples of microgreens that I'm that I have going. The lighting's not the best down here. This is amaranth. Um, this will be ready here in the next few couple of days to eat. And um, I have some spicy salad mix and some pak choy here that uh, the lighting again is terrible so it's hard to see but anyway i'm hoping by the weekend i'll be able to eat those and i have some leeks that i just uncovered today um i kind of had gotten a little bit uh lazy about planting microgreens and just decided that i needed to get the seed finished so i have a lot of microgreen seed and that tends to not um stay fresh for very long so um, they're probably a couple years old which is probably too old so the germination rate is definitely dropped I have some fennel that I'm getting germinated now and um, I love the leeks the leeks are great on everything um, so anyway these are some of the things I just planted upstairs this is the plastic I put over them until they germinate and are getting some true leaves. I get this free from the hospital I work at. They're just going to throw it away. And I think feel like rather than throwing away something in the landfill, I might as well get a few good uses out of it. So I use this year after year after year. So I just pop it up. Here's some other things I just planted today. What I did, what I need to do still with this one. I have this little sprayer that once I cover them, I already did it with those, um, with the dry um, medium, I just mist it with this a little bit. And I just do this misting thing until they germinate. And then once they germinate, I start bottom water. And germinate, oh, for several days, I will start bottom watering. Hi, Gunner, are you helping? Gunner's just inspecting, making sure I didn't mess anything up. He's quite the connoisseur on green. So I'm just gonna slip that under the lights. I make sure the lights are close to the plant um, so they don't get leggy. Hi, buddy. And these are some things not doing so well. I just started these hollyhocks. I'm hoping that more of them germinate, but these are gonna be hollyhocks. I planted a few rows. They just kind of emerged in the last couple days. There's another one coming up. So hopefully more will come up. The other things under here have been failures. I they, I might have just gotten them too wet. But they're flowers, so I'm not going to worry so much about those. We'll leave them in there for now, and hopefully they'll do something. If not, I can re replant those. And that's all I have under here right now. Um, so I have four racks and once they start getting to like, this will be soon, I take them upstairs to actually into my guest room of all places, um, which used to be my growing room. But my, when my daughter moved out, I took it on as a, as a growing room, but, um, I kind of feel like I need a guest room. So I redid her room and I made it into a guest room, but I'm still like taking plants up there after they've gotten to a point that they really don't need to be under the lights anymore, but it's a room that gets a lot of natural light from outside. So I just kind of have something down to protect the hardwood floor. And I've set the these containers on, on that. Again, something I brought home from the hospital that's waterproof that I laid down on the floor just to protect the floor so it doesn't get wet and ruined. And um, I just check on them every day and make sure. But I all, all that's really up there right now, I have onions of multiple different kinds, leeks, asparagus that I started from um, seed, and which the asparagus won't produce anything for a couple of years. Not that I can harvest anyway, but it, I have asparagus and I just wanted to make the plot bigger. So I started that with a few different varieties. And um, what else is up there? That might be the most of it, actually. The wheatgrass, and then I just put the bells of, <clears throat> or excuse me, the um, pumpkin on a stick up there. And I have some, I should show you at least a picture of my, um, I have lemons up there. And I, 
I need to get them off the tree as soon as I need lemons. I'm going to leave them on until I need some need them for something because I use citrus a lot to cook with. So um, I don't think I have any fresh lemons in my refrigerator right now. So I'm going to use those with the next bout of lemon needs that I have. But um, I'll show you a picture. I'll, we'll go up and I'll show you what those look like. It's pretty cool. I'm excited because this was my first year of having lemon and lime trees. The lime trees haven't produced anything yet, but the lemon tree has too. I'm, it's very exciting for me. Here are my lemons, my lemons from my very own lemon tree. They were just blossoms when I brought the tree home. And unfortunately, I haven't gotten any limes yet but because I love limes I use them a lot so that's exciting to me as you can tell this is the guest room and here are the things I brought up from downstairs most of it is like these are onions and leeks and shallots and the reason they look like they do kind of brown on top is because and I need to do it again I like to keep them trimmed down to about four inches until I plant them so they where you cut them they turn kind of brownish, um, but it helps them focus on the bulb um, production while they're inside. And once I plant them outside, I will not trim them. Um, this is my asparagus. I have one, one um, onion that ended up in there and it looks like it's gonna be a red one. So, but anyway, that's my asparagus that I'm gonna be planting. And this I forgot all about. This was actually an experiment for me. This is sweet potatoes that I had a, um, four small little sweet potatoes and I thought I, I hear of people starting their own sweet potato slips and I've never done it myself. I've always just um, bought my sweet potato slips and I have ordered some already this year but I thought what, what's the harm in trying to make my own just as an, as an experiment. So here they are two of the potatoes I put in here are developing tons of slips. I wouldn't have had to buy any, but I'm not going to cancel my order yet. I can't plant them till June, so they won't come till June, but um, two of the potatoes aren't doing a darn thing, but two of them, my gosh, I would have had, by the time I can plant these, I would have had so many slips, I wouldn't have had to buy any, but who knew? So I'll know for next year. So I'll know for next year and, um, it was just an experiment. We'll see if I can keep them going until planting time and then I'll know for sure if I really need to waste money because sweet potato slips are very, very expensive if you, if you buy them um, off, off the internet. So off, you know, even from, like I get them from a reputable place and um, they're expensive. So anyway, that is the end of my seed planting for today. And I hope that um, that was helpful to all of you. And my goal in, in showing you all of this is not so much that um, you have to go out and buy uh, seeds to plant everything by seed. I just think it's much less expensive than going out and buying the actual plants because um, a packet of seeds is so much cheaper than a, a you know, six or four or six plants in a, a little container to plant. So you can plant seeds for two years for the price of what you paid for that six pack. So, um, and it's, you know how it was grown, you know that it is organic and where it came from and that nobody sprayed anything on it. And um, it's just, it, you just have peace of mind that it's healthy. And I'm looking outside right now at my um, garden. I can see it through the, one of my gardens through this window and it looks so pathetic and horrible. Um, the bees are in the middle of it and the, they're all wrapped up in this black stuff to help keep the winter wind off of them. And it just looks absolutely awful. But out there, when I was walking out there the other day, I actually have cilantro that overwintered. And cilantro is really an annual here where I live, but it se must have seeded itself and it is actually coming up in a row out there. So I probably won't have to plant cilantro. Um, maybe, maybe. But anyway, the, the really great thing about planting for me on a Thursday is that Thursday is cleaning day. And now that I've made this ginormous mess in my kitchen, I need to get it 
cleaned up. And so cleaning the kitchen is first on the list. But so anyway, it's time to get busy now. It's time to get busy and cleaning this mess up. Thanks for watching. See you next time.